Today I'm going to show you how to add a really realistic lens blur effect to your images in Photoshop. I'll be using the lens blur filter, but the secret to getting this realistic lens blur effect is a depth map. I'm going to show you how to create your own depth map from scratch. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Today I want to show you how to make a really realistic lens blur effect in Photoshop and I'll be using the exceptional lens blur filter. The lens blur filter gives you the ability to add a depth map to give you a more realistic lens blurring effect. I've made a couple videos in the past showing you how to add a depth blur effect using Photoshop's depth blur neural filter. And it's really pretty good. It's either hit or miss though. It's still in beta, so they're improving it. But it's not quite there yet. But I want to show you today how to make your very own depth map and get really realistic results. And it's really not that hard to do. And I'm going to show you how to do it today. Okay, then let's get started. So what I want to do is have the focus be this elephant right here and I want the background elephant and all the background to go out of focus but I want it to look like a camera lens has made it go out of focus in other words I want to get kind of a shallow depth of field maybe as if it was shot with like a f4 you know anywhere between an f2 to an f4 somewhere in there so I get a nice shallow depth of field because I think it gives you a really nice effect and you'll see here shortly the first thing we need to do is duplicate the background layer. That's Command or Control J to duplicate it. And we'll be working on that layer, sending it into the lens blur filter. Then we're going to add two blank pixel layers above that. So click right here. That's one blank pixel layer one more time. And then what I want you to do is select the very first blank pixel layer because we'll be working on that layer first. We'll be using these two blank pixel layers to create our depth map. So follow me closely here. The first thing we want to do is we want to set our default colors to the default color of black and white. So type your D key. That'll get you to the default colors. And next, I want you to grab your gradient tool. So click on your gradient tool because we're going to need that to draw a gradient. We're going to use the gradient tool to set up the depth of field area. Okay, so the depth of field area is going to be from this very start of this image right here, the foreground up to these hills back here okay and then of course we have the sky so what i want you to do is if you hold your shift key down and keep holding it down and click right here and you have your default color so when you click and drag up it'll start with black and you want to go right to where this hill is you can go slightly past it if you want to right like that and you see it draws a nice gradient the dark area is the area closest to us and as it turns gray and then gets lighter and lighter and lighter gray till it turns to pure white this is going to be the depth of field and the gradient will be giving us that depth of field so if i turn this gradient off you can see from here to here is our depth of field point from here up to here and it's represented by this particular gradient that was the first step in making the depth map now let's shut off this layer right here layer two and now i want you to go to layer one click on layer one now if you have the tk8 plugin for photoshop you can use this action right here to select your subject if you don't all you need to do is come up to select in the menu and come down and click on subject and it will select your subjects now it's selected this elephant and part of this elephant i don't really want this elephant i'm mainly interested in this elephant i'm selecting it because i want it to be the main part that will be in focus okay so what i can do to get rid of this selection here is i'm just going to grab this marquee tool and i'm going to hold down my option or alt key and that'll subtract from the selection and I'll just get rid of that. Now I only have the elephant selected. Now I need to do a little bit of uh, selected masking on it. So we can either come here if you have the TK panel and click, or what we can do is come up and click select and mask right here. So let's click select and mask. And now we see our elephant here. Now we're going to refine this elephant a little bit. There's different ways of viewing your selection and select and mask. You can come up here to view and you have different choices i'm using overlay and i set this up to do a magenta overlay because i think that it's easier to see you can change that by clicking here and changing this to any color you want and then you can adjust the opacity of that overlay as well 
So I'm going to leave it about like this. And what I want to do is really zoom in. There's just a couple little areas that it missed. Like if you'll notice like right here, it overextended a little bit. I'm going to grab this tool right here. And it's just a regular old brush. I'm going to make the uh, brush a little smaller. I'm going to hold the option key down and just paint this little piece off right there. You see that? And here's a little piece right here. I'm just going to paint that off. And then over here on the tail back here, it missed the section right here. So I'm just going to paint right up. I'm not holding the older option. I'm just painting straight away. And it missed some of the elephant right here and here. Just like that. I'm just going to paint that in. And then I'm going to refine this tail a little bit here. So what I'll do is grab this other tool here. And if I hover over this, this tells us that it is a refined edge tool. It's more of, a, more of an intelligent tool. So what I'm going to do is make it a little bit smaller. And let's pull down the opacity a little bit so we can see. You can see parts of the tail out here. I'm just going to paint over these parts of the tail. And it'll do a pretty good job of picking these areas up just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect here, but something like that. And I don't know if this is part of the tail. Let me see. I'm going to pull this opacity down. Yeah, that is part of the tail right there. Even like right here. Okay. So I think that's good. That's good enough. And maybe down here, I really don't have to get this area down here. I'm going to make my brush a little larger and just paint down around here. It's not going to really matter, but I'm going to go ahead and paint it anyway. All right. And then I'm just going to output this as a selection back into Photoshop. And let's make this smaller. So we can see it and we can see we have this elephant selected. Now, what do we do next? I have to think about this. Oh yeah, now I remember. What we need to do is come up to layer two, our gradient that we made. So click on that and we can see our gradient. What I need to do is select the focus point. Now I'm figuring right at the feet of this elephant will be my focus point, which will cover the entire elephant. So what I need to do is get this gray color right at the feet here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is get my brush tool. I'm typing B to get my brush tool. But make sure you have a uh, layer three turned on, okay? Because I'm going to be painting this elephant in with this color down here. I'm going to hold my alter option key down. And you'll see here in a second, I'm going to pick this color. But what I want to do is make sure I'm on layer three. This is very important. And I have 100% opacity. And I'll make my brush larger. And all I want to do is paint that color of gray over the entire elephant here. Okay, just like that. Now, the tail's at a different focal point. It's probably somewhere around right here in the focus field, right in this area here. So I'm going to hold my Alter Option key down and make sure I have my brush on. And click right here, this color right here. And what I'm going to do is make my brush a little smaller. And I'm just going to paint that color right there. Because it's in a little slight different focal point right there at that spot right there. Okay. And now if I deselect what I've just done, command D, you can see there I have it. Now this is the point that will be in focus and you'll see how this works here shortly. So I'm creating this depth map. I have my focal length set up here. I have my focal point set up on this elephant. And next I need to deal with, there's a little elephant here, right? So what we're going to do is shut off this gradient layer so we can see our image again. Now I can leave this layer on with the elephant. That's cool. But I'm going to grab an object selection tool. It's an artificial intelligence tool. It's a great tool for selecting objects. And I'm going to draw a marquee right around my little elephant. But no, I can't draw it yet. It's going to say, hey, it couldn't find anything, Dave. And there's a reason because I have to actually be on a layer where we can see the elephant. That layer doesn't have an elephant. It's just blank pixels around where the elephant is. I'm glad I made that mistake because I know some of you will make that same mistake too. And now with the object selection tool, I'll just draw a marquee around the elephant and it will be selected. Now let's think about this for a minute. This elephant is in a different focal point than this elephant, right? And I'm going to have this elephant in focus. This elephant will be out of focus. Now, right now there's a sharp edge wrapped around this elephant, which I don't want, right? Because it's going to be out of focus. And that's going to look funny, a sharp edge around the elephant when the rest of the elephant on the inside of the selection will be blurry. So there's something we have to do to take care of that. And it's pretty easy to do. We just need to feather our selection. Now, if you have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can come right to this icon and click it. It's a feather icon and it opens up your feather selection. 
And I determined in advance that 15 pixels was going to be perfect for this through a little experimentation. And that'll work. You can click OK. If you don't have the TK8 panel for Photoshop, just come up here to select and come to modify and click feather. You'll get it that way as well. 15 pixel radius, click OK. And that puts a 15 pixel radius around that selection. Now we have to come back up. This is very important to layer three. Okay, make sure you have layer three selected. But now also turn layer two on. And there's a reason for this. When we turn layer two on, we got to find a color we're going to use to set this focal point. And I'm going to go right to the foot of this elephant right here where you see the selection. I'm going to get my brush tool, B for the brush tool. I'm going to select this color right here by option or alt clicking. Let's shut off this. Uh, well, I'll leave it on actually. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to paint that color right now inside that elephant. Now I'm just going to paint like this all around the elephant. Now I got to keep painting. I'm going to lift my brush and paint again. See how it's feathering outside. I'll zoom in on my editing software so you can see it. I'm just going to paint it a few times on the edge here and it'll keep expanding out a little bit because that's where that blur is. And you have to lift your brush to apply more paint. So right like that. And I hope you can see that paint out there. Just like that. You want it to go outside the selection feathering out. Okay. And now we can deselect by command or control D to deselect that. And just like that, you have created a depth map. Now we need to save this depth map. I'm going to show you how to do that. We need to save this depth map as a channel. So you see my channels are here. They're open. Yours may be in a different spot, but make sure you have your channels opened up. And what I want you to do is simply see this circle here with the little dash lines around it. If I hover over this, it tells me load channel as a selection. That's what you want to do. So click this. This loads this as a selection. See the marching ants? And then this next icon, this will save that selection as a channel. So click right here. And there's our depth map. It's called alpha one. Now you can double click this and give it a name like depth map. And I recommend that you do that. You don't have to, but depth map. And that way you'll know what it is. Okay. Cause we're going to be using that. Now we can deselect this selection commander control D. We don't need these two layers anymore because we've created the depth map. All we have to do at this point is delete these two layers. So I'm just going to delete this layer. And I'm going to delete this layer. And now the layer that I duplicated from the background layer, I'm going to send that into the lens blur filter and we'll apply that depth map to it. Make sure you have layer one selected, come up to filter and come down to blur and look for lens blur. Give that a click and that launches the lens blur filter. Up here in this list, we have a depth map and source. You click here and you'll see different things in here like none, transparency, layer mask. Make sure you have depth map selected and there's your depth map. Now you'll say, hey, Dave, your elephant's out of focus. What the heck is going on here? Well, I need to set a focal point. You see this little pointer with a little square? It comes up by default and you can set a focal point. Like for instance, if I click right here on this elephant, now remember that elephant was that certain color gray. When I click here, watch what happens. My elephant will come into focus. When I clicked on my elephant, that set this blur focal distance right here. Now you could select different points because remember, we have a depth map. So if I click right here to the front grasses here, give it a second. Now my elephant gets slightly out of focus, right? So I can click at different parts here because I have a depth map made. It's pretty nice. So I'm going to click back on my elephant and he will come right back into focus. And then we have a radius here and this determines the amount of out of focus you get. So if you drag this more to the right, you're going to make the image go more out of focus. Now it takes it a while for it to do its little thing. So be patient there, but I'm determining somewhere right around like 50%, maybe there's 48% looks pretty natural. I may even pull this back a little bit more. Okay. And then we have a preview up here. We can see here's a before and here's an after. But it was important on this little elephant that I did that little blur because he's out of focus, right? And if I wouldn't have done that, added that little feathering around the edge of the elephant, these ears would have looked really sharp and that would have looked really weird and not right. And also this tail is slightly out of focus too because it's in a different focal point, but it looks real natural. Thanks to the work that we put in to make the proper depth map by studying out the image. Now these other adjustments like blade curvature, rotation, specular highlights, they deal with uh, 
lens bokeh. You know, if you get light areas, you'll get like specular highlights, and and sometimes you'll see the diaphragm of your lens showing through. So this is a really elaborate filter. You can go and adjust different things in here. I'm not going to mess with that today because that'll make this video way too long. But right now, you can see I'm getting a really beautiful result. And on this image, I don't need to mess with this stuff because I don't have any real high specular highlights that I want to play with. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But there's one uh, adjustment I really want to show you. See where it says noise? What I like to do is zoom in to about 200%. So if you come down to the left corner here, see where the plus is? I'm going to click it one time, it goes to 100%. I'm going to click it two times, it goes to 200%. Now, if you'll notice here, let's look on the uh, in focus area of the elephant. You can see there's a slight amount of noise, not much. But what happens whenever you blur a background, you totally obliterate noise. So to and, and your image could look fake, and people may not realize why it's fake, but because there's the reason being there's no noise back there. So we have to kind of match the noise of the out of focus to the in focus areas. And usually what I like to do is use Gaussian distribution. So click on that. And I generally always use monochromatic. But what I'm going to do is change this to one pixel because there's not much noise in here. And when I do one pixel, I add just a slight amount of noise. Let me go to two pixels so you can really see it here. Give it a second here. Can you see that noise in there? I'll just exact, yeah, look on this elephant back here. See the noise? But that's too much. One pixel is all it really needs. One pixel will do the job. But that's very important. You don't want to miss that step. But that's one of the reasons I love this filter, because it lets you add that noise to the image to make it look more realistic. And now we're done. All we have to do is click OK, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now here is our before. And here is our after. Just that little bit of extra bokeh in there really draws our attention to this elephant. But I love doing this effect to images. It works great on like people photography, pet photography, animal photography, just about anything where you want to add some really nice realistic bokeh. You may not have a real expensive lens or you didn't get your depth of field set right. This lens blur filter and along with making your own depth map you can just tailor the image just the way you want it. You're the master behind your editing process. And that's all part of the joy of editing for me, being able to do this kind of work. And by the way, if you want to see what your depth map looks like, just come down into channels and click on depth map, and you can see that's your depth map, okay? And just click RGB again, and you'll get back to your image. Now, you may say, well, that seems like a lot of work, Dave. I'll be honest with you. To do this, it probably took me about, oh, uh, I don't know, maybe seven minutes, if that. Once you get a plan and you figure out what you want to do using the uh, selection tools in Photoshop and the gradient tool and things like that, it's, it's really not that hard to do. It's really quick. But in my opinion, it's highly worth it to get these type of results. Results that are like uh, worthy to hang up on your wall that look really great. It is truly worth it, in my humble opinion. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial today. I really enjoyed bringing it to you. This kind of stuff excites me, and I love doing this kind of work. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly and I'll see you all right here next time but until then happy editing